Hey, Chad from DriveLightning.com. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday. Just two things to talk about. Two quick things. First of all, what about my cool shirt? Notorious PIC, Pilot in Command. Yes, I'm a licensed drone pilot. Yes, I know that makes me a nerd, and that's okay. I'm fine with that, all right? But we're going to talk about two things. One, the Aptera. The Aptera. That's that crazy little three-wheeled car out of California. Uh, big news on that, okay? Number two. We're going to talk about why people go electric or why you maybe have gone or are thinking of going electric. I had one interesting comment this week about that. It's worth talking about. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right with it. So let's start with electric cars. Why are you thinking or why have you gone electric? You know, some people think if you drive an electric car, it means you're really big into the environment. And I love the earth, I'm sure you do too, so an environmentalist is kind of built into us, but it doesn't mean that that's why you're going with an electric car. You know, I'm not a scientist, maybe you're not a scientist. Maybe you haven't done all the math and calculations on what's really better for the earth and what's not. I haven't done all that. I went with an electric car because one, we needed a new car, me and Sarah. Two, it was in the middle of the world crisis we've been facing. And three, our jobs have fizzled. We were window cleaners at the time, very successful, not to brag, okay, but we had a good business. Everything went to pot on us and we still needed a car. So for us, we factored in the cost. We could afford a better car if we weren't spending a couple hundred bucks a month in gas. And because of that, minus the electric cost, we factored in the electric cost, electric car made more sense for us. It was economical, economical, economical. It was an economical decision, but it ends up maybe it's an ecological decision too. I don't know. But now that we've driven electric, that's it. That's it. We can't go back to a regular car. We can't. But I got this comment this week I want to show you from somebody else. It really struck my interest in why this person went electric. So let me show you that right now. So I'd asked in the comments, is this your first EV after finding out he drives a BMW i3? This is from how long does it have to be? He said this, yes, first EV, leased a Kia Nero for the previous three years, hybrid, but not a plug-in, about 50 miles per gallon. I'm not the standard electric vehicle driver for sure. I own and work in a small construction business. I didn't get the i3 for the environmental reasons. We have cheap hydro power in my county, so it seemed obvious to me to feel at home for cheap. And I felt after years of research that the BMW on the used market was a good choice. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. The BMW i3 is an excellent choice. So thank you for the comment, but that's one reason why somebody would go electric. So now for others, maybe it is the, the, um, the global climate crisis. They say the global warming's taking over and you wanna do your part by lowering gas emissions and, and going with electric. Maybe it's the expense like it was for us and for that gentleman. Uh, maybe it's something else altogether, but let me tell you what it is for all of us ultimately. When you drive an electric car, it's just too much fun to go back to a gasoline car. Now, a Corvette is fun. A, a Mustang is fun. Muscle cars are fun. Okay, I get it. All electric cars are fun. We drive a 16 Nissan Leaf. We drive a BMW from 2017 i3. Super fun. When you read reviews on electric cars and people that drive them, they'll tell you, wow, you hit the pedal and it's gone. Uh, they're just really quick and really fun to drive. It's a different beast. So for whatever your reasons are, I want to know them in the comments so we can talk about them again maybe next week. Are there other comments? Is it other than economy, fun to drive, and environmental concerns? Are there other reasons to drive electric that I haven't considered? Or which of those three categories maybe you fall in? And if you don't mind, I'm going to share your comments. Even if you do mind, once you put them on the internet, they're kind of open to share, so I'm probably going to share them anyway. Don't hate me. Don't sue me. Okay, I don't have any money. All right, so that's number one. Why do you drive, or why are you thinking about driving electric? The second thing is the Aptera. Here's the big news. Sarah's in the other room. I dropped $100 to the pre-order the Aptera. Why? It's really cool. It's really cool. Hey, take a look. I'm going to show you my pre-order page, okay? Take a look. Here we go. Aptera website. The Aptera, as you know, we've talked about it before, is a weird little car. It's a three-wheel deal. But 
As you can see, it says your Aptera expected delivery. Apparently sometime this year, we'll see. So I pre-ordered the Aptera. Yes, I dropped the big $100 bill uh, to pre-order the Aptera. So here's the one I ordered. Let's just walk through it real quick, see if you think it's uh, strange enough to buy or weird enough to uh, buy. Okay, because you got to buy it. I'm going to buy it, I think, if Sarah lets me. 250 mile range. Now that's just the option I chose. You can get up to a thousand, but also this car has solar panels on it. We'll go over that in a minute. So you get some charge as you go. This doesn't impress me five and a half seconds uh, to 60 miles an hour because all electric cars are quick. They're all fast. My Nissan Leaf is fast. It's not this fast. True. It's fast enough. They're all fast enough, people. Electric cars are quick. Uh, 100 kilowatt drive system, 16 mile daily solar charge capacity. Now, this also is adjustable depending on what unit you buy. And when you pre-order, keep this in mind, what you're doing is you're saying, I want to be in line when these hit production to make the choice to buy it. You can still say, I don't want it, give me my $100 back. Or you can say, I'll take it, thank you. But also you can change it as you go. So let's go through what I chose here. Black. Looks like this. Here's other choices if you want to see them. Silver, white, and then custom. And if you see if you do custom, they're just going to call you and say, what color do you want and all that. I'm not going to deal with that. If Sarah and I buy it, I'm buying that one right there. Uh, here's the, what I was talking about with the different battery size. So we're going with this, but you could go with a 400-mile battery, a 600-mile battery, a 1,000-mile battery. But look what it does to the price. <clears throat> So we're starting out with this one. If things go really good in our other business, maybe we'll go in this one. But right now we can afford maybe this one. So that's our starting range. And here's what I was talking about too with the solar power. So what's included is just this. So it's the roof and the dash. So here, the green, the green, a couple bits back here, right? Now you could spend 900 bucks and get that much. Now look what it did to this over here. Now I can get in ideal situations, by the way, maybe Arizona, uh, 40 miles a day. Which means if your commute's 20 miles, you're never going to charge this car. The battery is always going to be charged by solar. Uh, and then, of course, there's 34 if you choose that. There's with the hood, you can get up to 22. To me, the difference between 16 and 22 is nothing. In Michigan, we don't have sun. We've read about it in books, we've seen it in movies. But it never actually has happened here. So since the solar power isn't a big deal to me, uh, Sarah and I thought, well, let's just go with the one that doesn't cost extra. <clears throat> all right, let's move down. You could choose this. You could choose all-wheel drive. All-wheel, of course, means three. That's your rear wheel, two front wheels. We chose to not spend the extra 2500 and go with the front-wheel drive. Again, if business goes great this year, maybe we'll change. But for now, that's fine. Let's move on. Interior was a no-brainer. So you got this one, which is just a very light blue accent here. This one, which is, you know, no offense if you like it, but ugly. All right. And then there's custom. Hey, we'll call you, blah, blah, blah. No, we want this. Isn't that cool? The orange on the back and the sides, orange accents here. Don't matter if you think it's cool. Sarah thinks it's cool, so... I don't have to save anything, so I'm not making any changes. But anyway, there it is. The Aptera. I've got it on pre-order. I'm one of 16,000 people who have a chance to buy this when it hits production, which they think and hope will be this year. So check it out. Aptera. I don't know the website. Look it up. It's ApteraUS.com or something like that. And uh, maybe you like it too. All right. Maybe you don't. I don't know. That's it. But... We're going to buy a car this summer. It may or may not be the Aptera because the Internet's going to choose. We're going to let you decide. But on our list of five cars, pretty sure the Aptera is going to be one of them. All right? All right. That's it. ChadDriveLightning.com for this week. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. And have a great day.